I made my mind to try even though my spouse does not try at all, because I knew what lacked between us. However, as time passes by, I find myself hating him. Do I have to try to control this feeling as well? It tells me that you did not find what you did wrong clearly. You say you found out what you did wrong, but has anybody confirmed that you are right? It is your opinion. You say to yourself, considering what I have done, this must be my fault. But it doesn't mean that your answer is the right answer. You still have not found the correct answer. The answer that you think is the answer is an answer only to yourself. If you do surgery on someone with a wrong diagnosis, will they get better? If it is a misdiagnosis, they will not get better. But with a correct diagnosis and proper medication, they will get better. Frequently, people misdiagnose. If things don't turn out well despite trying, you should consider that your answer may not be correct. If you have the correct answer, then the solution will appear clearly one by one. If you say, I have the right answer but don't know how to solve the problem, then you have it wrong. The wrong answer will never lead to a solution. If you have the correct answer, then the solution to the problem will arise precisely. That is why I say you have been misdiagnosed. You do not have the correct answer. My answer to you is that you have not found the correct answer yet. Therefore, you are still struggling. You have to try again to find the answer. If you did wrong, you should close your mouth from now on. If you discern that there is a fault on your part, then you should keep your mouth closed. I think that the problem was caused by closing my mouth. I should have said what was right as right and wrong as wrong and should have tried to make him understand. I think that just closing my mouth was the problem. Even if you had talked, things would have gotten worse. It's wrong to think that things would have worked out better if you spoke out. If things turned out this bad, your relationship would have been entangled anyways, even if you had talked. There is an underlying principle to your situation, and that's why I am able to make the diagnosis by just hearing a few words from you. The problem was not that you closed your mouth. There is a principle in closing one's mouth. If one just decides to close one's mouth and stay silent, the rest of the family will get frustrated and go crazy from this. One should close one's mouth with humility. Imagine a human being with verbal skills who decides not to talk. Let me tell you my experience of practicing silence for 17 years. Why did I close my mouth for 17 years? I felt guilty about insisting that I knew the right answer without knowing the law of the universe. So I decided to close my mouth from then on. I am sorry. That is why I closed my mouth. Kneeling down, I started to pick up trash, repenting for 17 years. I did not talk to anybody for 17 years. I did not make a single assertion that I was right. I picked up trash, kneeling down and repenting. I did not respond to anyone swearing at me and spitting on me. I did not respond to or question any mean words that were thrown at me. 
I couldn't mix myself with them. It was my repentance. Because I did wrong, I closed my mouth. As I continued my repentance for a certain period of time, the eyes of wisdom opened for me. It was different than closing one's mouth because you think you and the other party are not on the same wavelength. That is not the right way of practicing silence. That is actually an indication of extreme egotistical stubbornness. Things will entangle more. It is even more dangerous than speaking. You are actually disrespecting the other party more. Although you weren't doing it on purpose, that is exactly how it turns out. You are despising the other party even more. Then the relationship will become further apart. It will be even more difficult to resolve this issue. So what does it mean to close one's mouth? If you know this principle and then close your mouth, your behavior will be different. Your actions. If you close your mouth after you have humbly repented your wrong, then you will be respectful to whatever the other party says and your behavior will change. You will uphold the other party with deference, however he behaves. If the other party throws away something, you will pick it up, lowering your head silently without giving an accusing look. You are picking it up, lowering your head because you are sorry. As he behaves that way due to your wrongdoing, you must endure and pick it up apologetically. If you can't do it humbly, do not pick it up. If you don't feel like it, don't pick it up. When you act with the right mindset, your behavior changes accordingly. That is why there is the law of grand nature. If you understand this law correctly and apply it in your life, your behaviors will change to accommodate people correctly. I am not saying this to tell you off. You have to study and research these matters to resolve the issue, and it may be challenging to do, but the result of your labor will affect your children. Once you are enlightened at the cost of this pain, you will earn the power to guide your children not to make the same mistake as you did. You will not make the same mistakes again. Even if you do not know the exact answer, but believe that there must be something that you did wrong, then you should humbly close your mouth. You must practice silence with humility. If you act with this mindset, your manner will change even before becoming aware of it. Your actions will change even if you don't want to. Then things around you will change as well. A tangled knot will begin to untangle and your study will begin. You will truly understand your faults and begin to solve this problem. It is worthwhile to try and make this kind of effort.